beat ourselves up. That's the thing is, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't do this. I tell you, there's one thing that, that I do at work. <coughs> I never let, a, let that student ever call himself stupid. That's not going to happen. You're not stupid, you're trying to learn something. Yeah. That's what you're here for. You realize that, that that's why we walk beside you. We don't just give you the keys and, here, you figure out how to drive an 18-wheeler and call me if you have any problem. It doesn't work, it doesn't work that way, right? You know? Why, why, why do you talk to a child so he can learn how to speak? Why do you walk with the, you know, they're supper walking because they're, they're trying to get up on their legs? Come on, come on, and you help them, you help them do that so they can learn. That's the way Jesus does. We're going step by step by step by step. That, and, and he expects us to grow at a normal rate, right? You expect, when there, when, unless there's some physical problem, you know, a lot of them on their feet, you know, a year's time, and them words are starting to come out, and, and it's a normal progress. We should grow as Christians, okay? We should be, there comes a point where it's not wrong for us to ask for prayer, and not wrong for us, but it's a time we need to turn that around and start praying for other people. That's what we need to do. We need the ones to go out and lay hands on other people. You're right, it's not just the past we kind of think about, but it's believers. The believers can go out. You know, if somebody says, would you pray for me? Brother, let's pray. And I, I love, I had a good friend, and I'm telling you, talking on the phone, and, and we talk, and, he, and you say we have prayer requests. No, he never puts it off. He says, let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. How come we can't pray? My sister calls me about once a month. Excuse me, she has prayer requests, and that's what she does. Tim, do you mind? Can we pray right now? I, you sure can. What's more important than that? And let's look at that. Go back to that. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added to you. Let's look at first. What does first mean? You know, first means coming before all other in time or order, the earliest. First. Seek him first. That is so important. The problem is we get that turned around. Okay? God, you know, I, I, really need a, I really need a new car or I need a new house or I need something. I need a new job. Okay, all right. What we tend to do is, is you know, this job seems like it's a perfect fit. You know, the money's good and, and, and the benefits are good, everything. And so I want that job, Lord. That's the job. I know it would be a good fit. Why don't we turn that around and say, God, you have me work where you need me to work. Okay? Because we did not know at that time if there's somebody down there that God wants you to reach. You Maybe it's not the level of money that you wanted right there. God will take care of that. But sometimes it's just being able to reach that person. If you don't get in that environment, you may not have an opportunity to reach that person. God, the best jobs I ever got, I wasn't advertised. I just went up. I felt God lead me and went over to, you know what? We've been looking for a man like you. I didn't know that. God knew that. See, it comes to a point, I love the songs today. That's really what we got to do. It's just lift up our arms, praise God, and, you know, seek Him. You know, when you see Him high and lifted up, that's, what, that's where we are, always got to be at. We got to always put God first. And, and, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 6, 5, you mentioned, with all thy heart, thy soul, and with all thy might. Now we look at the word all. Man, I mean, I'm telling you, and you, you, you break some of these words down. This is Deuteronomy 6, 5. All means exactly what it says. The whole of one's energy or interest. That's what it is. You know, to, to giving their all for what they believe. That's what it is. That's what you're talking about. It's just totally saying, God, okay, I, I surrender all. We sing that song at church a lot of times. I surrender all. And, and like some people said, you shouldn't sing that song unless you mean it. You shouldn't say, have thine own way, Lord. You know, we say in a song, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. A pastor said, don't sing it unless you mean it. Because yeah. God knows your heart anyway. You know, well, you know, you ought to give up this. Well, you know, I'm trying, Lord. I'm, I'm trying, but I like doing this. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, let's go back. You sang in song, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. That means cutting things off. You know, and sometimes it means that, you know, if, if it's a relationship or something, there's something that's keeping you uh, away from having a relationship, it needs to go, right? There should be nothing between you and God. Nothing. I'm telling you, I, the, the saints that I loved the most when I was growing up were them ladies at the church. They understood that. 
that everything was important. They would praise God for everything, every time, because they understood. That's how you did. And, and some of them come to church for years and years and years. My aunt, God bless her, she went on to glory. But she was probably 80, 80-some 80 years old, and I was speaking at her church uh, uh, for a revival, and we had, was going by her. She'd always walk to church. She's about four blocks away. She was in her 80s, and it was hot that night. It was still 100 degrees, and it was like 6.30 at night. And she was walking up to the church. And I said, well, you know, we'll give it right now. Nope, I can make it. I got this far, I can make it. You know, and that, that impressed me, you know, that she would walk that far to go and spend time with God. You know, that, you, you know, people can, they can say whatever they want about being somebody real, but I'm telling you, that's a real Christian right there that's willing to walk that. Because we didn't grow up with air-conditioned church. We, we didn't have no air conditioning. I was just thinking the other day, we, we didn't have the same windows. We, we had a, a kind of plain windows that open at the bottom, right? And it had no screens, and the bees be coming in the back of the church. <laughs> and and they, think you, they think you got all spiritual all of a sudden because you're up in the back, you know. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. We're trying to be hallelujah, but we're swatting the bees away. <laughs> we're trying, you know, oh, he's all, he's, he's all charged up back here. Said, man, we need to do something about these bees. But, you know, <clears throat> but reality, you know, we, when, when God gets hold of your heart, you know, Jeremiah, he described like, like, a, like a fire shut up in your bones. I'm telling you what, when God really gets hold of you, you have to say something. It's almost when it's time to come out. I remember one person said, and he got to talk about his grandmother. I probably share his support, but he got to talk about his grandmother. And he says, you know, Tim, I, I, have, I live with my grandmother. I was raised with grandma. And, and, and you know what, Tim? I think she just trusts God too much. Mm. <laughs> Buddy, let me tell you. I, you know, sometimes you try you realize you've got to watch his tongue, but brother, sometimes things got to come out. Okay? That's one day I could not back off that. You know, as a Christian, as a believer, I, had to, I said, you cannot trust God too much. How are you going to do that? I said, no, she's got it right. She needs to keep trusting God. You've got to trust God. Because I'm telling you, I, I, deal in, I deal in the world of transportation, and I realize a, a, another second here, another second here, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Let me tell you. And when you deal with driver's ed like I am on a 40-ton vehicle, and you realize just one, one issue over here can make the world a difference. I realize that every day. So every time I get back in lot, I thank God. But you know what? You don't drive in fear. What you always realize, when the teacher is calm, you know what? The student is calm. And that's where Jesus wants to tell us that if you trust me, See, your trust looking all and say, well, I don't have enough money, God. I don't have this. I don't have that. Stop thinking about what you don't have and look at what you do have. That's what you have. Man, if, if you woke up this morning, that's a blessing you woke up. Yeah. Did you think everybody woke up this morning? You have a bed? You know, I remember not sleeping on the bed. I remember sleeping on the floor. I remember those days. When I, I, I did have an opportunity this church, let me sleep in the basement that had a, had a bed at that time. But I didn't have a bathroom or anything. Then I graduated upstairs, and I could sleep on the pastor, assistant pastor's floor, but it had a bathroom up there. I was thankful for that. Didn't have a refrigerator, but I, I still, I got this big, big hunk of cheese there. I got given to me, and he had an empty file drawer, and I remember opening that file drawer, chuck, cutting a chunk of cheese off, eating that cheese. Praise the Lord. Because you know why? I never forgot those days, because now I don't have to do that, right? But, you know, God, I tell you what, when you thank him for the hunk of cheese in a drawer, hallelujah, you can thank him for the hot dogs on your plate. Let me tell you. I tell you, I tell you being thankful changes everything. Yeah. Having a heart that says, you know what, God, if, if my covers aren't full, if, if, that old, if that old gas gauge, and I remember that. You used to get paid on Friday, you know, and that old gas gauge, it'd be past the, you know. You know, it'd be past eat, and you pray and you can get home. I'm telling you what, come on, come on, come on. Just, just, just give me a little bow. Get a bow. And, buddy, I'll tell you what, I remember that. I remember that. When them gas lights come on, I say, we're, you know, we're pretty close there now, brother. You know? And, 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 and your money come over overnight. You know, you get your direct deposit. Then, Lord, all I need to do is get me down to the gas station. <laughs> you know? and, and, and where I live, the gas station was downhill. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah. It was downhill, so I could crest that hill. I could coast down the gas station. Hope nobody's in the way. But you know what? <clears throat> I'm thankful that I don't have to do that no more. I'm thankful that we can have a full tank of gas, you know, even before the end of payday. That's what we got to get, is that we're going to trust God no matter what the circumstance is. And that's what we're going to do. I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 3. And, and, of course, Daniel chapter 3, as we know, that, that's the story of the Hebrew boys that, that went into the fire. And everybody's familiar with the story. Now, I always like to look up a few things. Because the one thing about the one thing about that situation, you know, you had Shadmach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, and th those were names that Nebuchadnezzar gave to them. But I was looking up the original names they had before that got changed, and what that what that meant, because that was important. Yeah. You know that they, they didn't change their names, and Nebuchadnezzar didn't change their name. But the original names, I really love that, because God, you know, God is so wonderful. <laughs> He's, he, he's always, to me, God is, is just such, he's so awesome. And, you know, we, we serve such a mighty God. We cannot forget that. We cannot forget that. We need to wake up every morning praising God and thanking God. Every morning. Even if things aren't the way you want them to be and, and you have issues with kids or grandkids, you know what, God, I still want to thank you. Because you know what's going to happen today? My son, my daughter, their lives going to change today. You know, cause somebody to go over and talk to them. You know, cause some circumstance to happen where they have to turn back to you. Because you know what, God? I am never going to give up on my kids. You, you cannot. As a Christian, I don't know how you can. You know why? Because in the Bible, there's a perfect example of somebody not giving up on the kids. And that's the thief that repented on the cross. You talk about an example. Let me tell you. Somebody, I know I said this before, but sometimes it's good to repeat stuff. But, you know, you had to see a grandma or a mom, you know, how they washed the clothes and the tears was going down. You know, Lord, I don't know where he's at. I don't even know where my grandson's at. I don't know. And, and them tears are going down from the face. But I just saved my boy. Saved my grandson. You know, yeah, he done things wrong, but I've never stopped praying for him. Never stopped praying for him. You know what? And, man, you can't get much closer than going out, let me tell you. I mean, he was close. But he, but he, but he knew that was Jesus on the cross. He knew it was. Because Jesus, you know, sometimes in prison at that time, you know, people's yelling at them, they yell back because they know it's last out, you know. And, and, and But, you know, he said, he's Jesus, remember me. Isn't that powerful? I mean, that's a short prayer. Remember me. Now, Jesus, you know, people will still yell on him. Well, we'll believe you now if you come down off the cross. We'll believe you and all this stuff. You know, and he could say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Who's going to do that when they're going to be dying? Who's going to be saying that? They might be saying a lot of other stuff. But he knew this was the Son of God. Right? And he said, remember me. And Jesus, in his own pain, his own suffering. Isn't that, I mean, you talk about a tender heart. You know, when you're like this. This day. Isn't that powerful? That was a guy's last day. I mean, that, that was it. That's it. This day you're going to be with me in paradise. Isn't that something? He, in all of his pain, he reached out. That's why I say you should never give up on your kids or grandkids. You know, that that, that moment, just for death, his life was saved. Now, we looked at, well, Tim, I, that, that's a good story. The Bible says, but, but how many lives did that young man change? Did that man change? I said millions. You know why? Because people heard that story, and I'm preaching about today, and preaching about somewhere in the world, and somebody realized it's not too late. Right? It's not too late. He said he, he led a lot of people to Christ with his life. Now, it wasn't God's perfect will for him to get, end up where he was at. You know, a lot of things that happen to us, but you know what? God used for good. The Bible says all things, hallelujah, work together for good, hallelujah. Good point. Yeah, all things, good things, the things that happen, seem like it don't make any sense. Mm. But you know what? <clears throat> we serve a God bigger than all those circumstances. Yeah. The Bible says for, excuse me, for with God, all things are possible. Right? That's what the Bible says. It says, for with God, it doesn't say apart from God. 
It says, for with God all things are possible. You know, and, I, and one of the things I just do as a side note, I like to study quotes. And, and one quote Ali said in the midst of a big quote, you know what he said? Impossible is an opinion, not a fact. You know? <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's pretty good. You know, well, you can't accomplish it. I got a God who can. I can't do it, but my God can. Because he can open a door that no man can shut. He can give you a job. Well, I don't quite have the education. I don't have this. Well, I'll tell you what. He can get the right person to it lined up. And I said, I'll tell you what. i tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and give you this job. But at the same time, I'm going to send you through school, too. Okay? I've seen so many doors open up. Those opportunities. As long as we start praising God and putting him first, he can do miracles all the time. And we got to thank God for miracles after miracle after miracle because he does so many in our life. Now, I'm going to look at these guys. The original name, Shadrach, Hananiah, means the original name was Yahweh is gracious. Mm -hmm. Just remember that. That's powerful. Jeez. I love that. Okay? Because they're getting ready to go in the furnace. We, we know the fiery furnace. <clears throat> and Michelle is who is like God. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And Azaria was Yahweh has held. Now, think yes. about it. Just keep that in mind. Let's look at Daniel 3. Now, we know the story that Nebuchadnezzar builds this big statue and he makes this declaration. And <clears throat> I'll just read a few verses. <clears throat> I'll start in verse 4. It says, uh, Then the herald cried aloud, You are commanded, O people, nation language, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. There's the creed right there. Okay, this way it's going to be. Well, right away, if you're a believer in Christ, you believe believer in Jesus at that time, if you hear a declaration like that, man, that, that's an that's a easy solution on that, right? Because you're not supposed to have any gods before God, right? So right there, then I don't make my stand right there. Okay? Regardless of what the circumstances might come after, they done said, are you going to worship this image? When, it, when that music comes, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, I love this because I'm, they're hearing this. And, and, and he says, verse uh, 6 says, and uh, whoever, whosoever does not fall down and worship shall, shall that very hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. That's the consequences right there. You know what's going to happen. You're supposed to fall down and worship God. Right there, there's only one God, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Jesus Christ. There's only one God, the holy God we serve, the in the beginning God, the Yahweh God, the I am God. Hallelujah. And that, that's consequences. Now, therefore, this verse 7, when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, so you got all mixed your people, and, and they talked the horn, pipe, lager, and trigon, dulcimer, bagpipe, and every kind of music. All the people, nations, and language fell down and worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So you got all these people suddenly bow down. Okay? Therefore, at the time, verse 8, certain men of Chaldea descent came near and brought malicious accusation against the Jews, and that would be Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You, O king, then he said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man, and he, they're just kind of going over, and who does not fall down and worship. But you know what? That the cast in the fiery furnace, I don't, I'm not going to go through every single word in here. 12, verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed and set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. Hallelujah. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Again, they're making that stand. They're letting everybody know, okay, you chose to worship the image. We are not. You know what? Because we believe in a higher God. We believe in way above Nebuchadnezzar, way above him. And we are not going to bow down in that image. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's the way it's put. Okay? Now, <clears throat> that, and, and, and basically they just ignore it. Now, that did not get, make, it, make Nebuchadnezzar very happy. 
Because verse 13, the Nebuchadnezzar in a rage and fury commanded to them to be brought to them, and they did. And then Nebuchadnezzar, verse 14 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, let's look at verse 15. Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound, basically what's he going to do? He's going to give them another opportunity. Maybe they misunderstood what was being said. Yeah, you know, that's what they're, that's what he's thinking. And he talks about the music. And every kind of music fall down and worship image, which I have made very good. But if you do not worship, you should be at, cast at once into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God? Who is that God who can deliver you out of my hands? Okay, wait a minute. Wait, you're, you're not going to serve my God. But who is that God that can, that can deliver you? What kind of God is that can deliver you out of this furnace? Okay, that's what he's saying. Now, he's all upset. Now, I love it. I, I just love their attitude. It, they're, they're not, it's not like they're in, intimidated. They're not getting all nervous because they know where their heart's at. They know Deuteronomy 6, 5. I love the Lord God with all my heart. And, and you know, you look in Exodus, you just have no other gods before you. They understood that part. They understood that my allegiance was just to God. That's who it's going to be. So, Nebuchadnezzar, you can say whatever you're going to say. We're still not going to worship your God. Oh, man, I tell you, this Bible's always good stuff. Okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, it, it, it seemed like it's such a relaxed way. You know, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, it is not necessary for us. It is not necessary for us to answer you at this point. We really don't need to say, answer anything. You know why? Because the fact we're standing says everything. Right there. That tells us right there. But... But they, they, they were, these were some dedicated young men. Said, if our God, now we're going to look at God. God's capitalized in here. Whom, and whom we serve, if our God whom we serve is able to deliver us <coughs> from the burning fire furnace, he deliver us out of your hand, O king. If he is going to deliver us, we're, we're good with that. But if not, even if he does deliver us, let it be known to you. Now, I love that. You know, he, he's pointing back to you, Nebuchadnezzar, to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image you have set up. King, do you understand that? Yeah. We don't need to answer you. You know, if, if, if our God delivers us, that's fine. If he doesn't, that's still fine. Yeah. Okay? But we're not going to serve your God. Do you understand that? And sometimes that's where that boldness as a Christian comes up. It says, no, I know, Paul said, I know whom I believe. I know to live is Christ. Where is that attitude in a lot of Christians? You know, sometimes we kind of waffle around. Somebody asked me one day, he says, he says Tim, Tim, are, 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 are you a religious person? They asked me that. Are you a religious person? I said, no, sir. I'm a Christian. <laughs> I'm a spiritual person. I believe in Jesus Christ. That's what I believe I'm not just a religious person. I know who has control of my life. I'm sure he didn't expect all that answer, but that's what he got. You know? No, I'm not, not just I'm not just religious. You know, I don't want it just to be a form on the outside because Jesus changes from the inside out. So I want to see my works that's going to prove. That's what it is. It's the heart. Out of the heart, the mouth speaking, out of the abundance of the heart. What's in there? And what's in there is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now. That answer, verse 18, that did not increase Nebuchadnezzar. He was already angry anyway. Okay? It wasn't going to make him more calm now. Now he's done got insulted because people are hearing all this. The Nebuchadnezzar, now if he was full of rage and fury before, he's really mad now. The Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his face expression was changed to antagonism against Shadrach, Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego. Now, buddy, he's not been embarrassed, and they pointed right to the king and told him. Therefore, he commanded Nebuchadnezzar that he, the furnace should be heated seven times harder than it was actually made to be heated. And brother, the fire's coming. The fire's coming seven times. And he commanded the strongest man in his army to bind him. Now they're going to be bound. Okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. 
Now let's take a look at that. Let's see when God delivered them. Now, he didn't deliver them at this point, right? They, they bound them. Okay? They're not, they're not delivered yet. But in one sense, they already are because they knew who they belonged to. So it didn't matter. They, whether they get delivered before or during after, it didn't matter. They're still going to keep their allegiance to God. So sometimes we want, God, well, I, I need you to get me out of a situation. So what? You know what? You either trust me or not. That's what it's going to be. And so many times in the Bible, that's what you hear from the heart of Jesus Christ. Just trust me. Just trust me. You know what? I got your best interest. You know what? Before you was in your mom belly, you know, I formed you. I knitted you together. I know your personality. I know what you're going through. You know, you think that, that I'm the same Jesus. Yesterday, today, and forever, I'm the same one. I came down here for you. That's what I did. I was willing to go to cross for you. You know, they sang out a song back in the back in the 70s. I, I love you, don't hear it very much. But when I, you know, when 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 Jesus was on the cross, I was on his mind. I love that. Because he's always thinking about you. He's always got, you know, if, if you got, if you got let, let people have tattoos, but you know, we're tattooed on his hands. So every time he sees us, you know, his open hand, you're always seeing us. That's how much Jesus loves you. He says that love me with an everlasting love. What does everlasting mean? It's never going to end. He's always going to love you. That's what you got to keep in mind. And that's what these Hebrews understood. These Hebrew boys understood that. And they bind them. And they cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, undergarments, turbans, and their other clothing. And they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So they, they didn't deliver outside the furnace, and they threw them in there, okay? Now, verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So it was hot. That tells you one thing. You don't need to mess with God's people because he'll deal with you. That's what I say. Somebody come, he'll deal with you. God dealt with them. You don't touch God's anointing. Because he'll, he'll, he'll deal with it. I just let him go. Because vengeance doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. He'll take care of that. Yes, and, huh? Amen. Oh, hallelujah, sister. <laughs> and these three men, now listen, the fire is that hot, it killed the men that threw them in. And Shadrach and Abednego, they fell down bound. Let's, let's remember that. They fell down bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Now, it's actually on fire. It's burning. They fell down bound. Hallelujah. In the fire. Okay? Now, let's, let's take a look at this. Then, then you know, if, if that fire's that hot, I mean, it, it don't take learning to burn people up. Right? But look, I love this verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, saw and was astounded. He jumped up and said to his counselors, and everybody knew this, not even that really ask a good question because everybody knew. Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? We, 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 we just threw three in. Is that true? Can, can everybody verify it? I'm sure they can. The answer true, O king. Listen to Nebuchadnezzar. He answered, Behold, I see four men loose. Hallelujah. They're loose. That's what it's going to take. Now they're in that, they're loose and they're walking around in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of the God. And one of them translated, the son of God. So Jesus was in there. You know, pre incarnate he was in there walking around with them. And you ever notice at this point that the, the Hebrew... The boys, you know, shed like this. They're not saying, get me out of here. I, I can't take this. You Why? Because Jesus is with them. Now they're completely loose. <coughs> they understood. And if we got to go in the fire, remember, Jesus is willing to go in the fire with us. Yeah. You know, see how powerful that is. This is one of the best, best scripture about just trusting God. He, they didn't get delivered outside the furnace. They got delivered inside the furnace. Because now they're walking around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and said, Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God. Boy, it turned around in a hurry, didn't it? 
Something happened on that. Oh, wait there. Wait a minute. That, I asked you that question. Who, who God is able to deliver? Now I know. Yeah. Now I know. Okay? My God can do it, but your God, that's got to be the true God. He understood something like that. And sometimes that's what God has us. It's a have us in those hard place. And how you come out of it, how you rack, they could change somebody else's life. And that's what happened here. Something got changed around. Because Nebuchadnezzar, now, you servants of the Most High, Most High God, come out and come here. Wait a minute, I don't talk to you. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. Again, you don't hear any complaints from them. You don't hear it. No problem. You know, you don't, you don't hear it back. And the satraps and all the deputies, the governors and the king counselors gathered around and saw these men. What a testimony. They saw them. And listen, that the fire had no power upon their bodies. Yeah. Can you imagine? Had no power on their bodies, nor was the hair of their head singed. You know how to talk about powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not a head of hair. God protected all of them. Can you imagine? The hair wasn't singed. Okay? Neither were their garments scorched or changed in color or condition, nor even had even the smell of smoke clung to them. They didn't smell like they'd even been through the fire. Hallelujah. Who could have done that but God? All right? Then Nebuchadnezzar said, oh man, oh, we've got to change here. Listen to what Nebuchadnezzar said. Nebuchadnezzar said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who believed in him, trusted him, and relied on him. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Get him out of the amplifier. Got to say that again. Okay? Yeah. Lamberty says, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Woo! Meshach, Abednego, who has sent his angel, then delivered, in his, delivered his servants, who believed in him, and trusted in him, and relied on him, and, and they set aside the king's command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. And he's going on. He says, hallelujah, therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, and language that speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should be cut in pieces and their house be made a dunghill, for there is no other god. There is no other God who can deliver in this way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Nebuchadnezzar, everybody realized that's a testimony. When they came out, they're a living testimony. How many times has this story been said and read over and over again? And guess what? After all this happened, then the king promoted Shadmach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. They got promoted. They went higher up because they understood one thing. And that's really where we have to come to. Yeah. That no matter what we are going through, yeah. but that, that Jesus will go in the fire with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we come out and we come out with that right attitude and realize, okay, God, it doesn't matter. It, 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 if I end up circumstance, I lose this job. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trust you for a better one. That's what I'm going to do. If I'm, I'm having some issues in a relationship, I'm going to trust you, God, that you're going to turn around. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep praying for my partner. I'm going to keep praying for those kids. I'm going to keep praying for my grandkids. I'm going to keep praying for the people I work for. Because you got me there for a reason. Hallelujah. And that's what we got to realize. So, you know what? So, when people know that it has to be God. There's some circumstances when you look at, you know, that's the only thing you can say. The only thing you can say. You knew it was God. And today, I don't want you to ever forget that. You know, make a list. Make a prayer list of all the prayers that God has answered just in the last month. But you look through your life. Man, you can have so many blessings that God has blessed you with, and you knew it was God. Think about your kids when you first held them, your grandkids. And, and see, when they raise their hand up in church, I never forget, we was at church and we, we had, had all my boys there. And then, you know, we, we had a chance. Uh, uh, everybody's kind of worshiping God. And when you see your son's hand go up, when you see him go up, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you, when you see that, when you hear that, I, or when my grandson, my oldest grandson, he, he, he lived they life West Coast, but one day, he decided, they, and, and his mom, she's very smart. 
Mom said, you know, they was calling kids to come down. Anybody want to come down? Kids, any adults want to come down and give their heart to Jesus? And, and he whispered, Mom, I think they ought to go. And she said, it's your choice. You go down there. I'm going to pray for you. I'm not pushing you. Let God draw you down. Amen. And that young man walked the aisle and, and gave his heart to the Lord and came back and said, you know what, Mom? My heart don't hurt anymore. <laughs> That's real stuff. Because yes. I remember that day I walked the aisle. And I walked the aisle and never regret it. The only regret, folks, is I took so long to get down there. I wish I'd walked it sooner. Mm -hmm. And had that sweet, sweet relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, everything's not always been roses and all that stuff. But as long as I know God is with me, as <laughs> long as I know that, we can get through anything. You know, uh, Phil Jackson, the coach of the, the Bulls and the Lakers, and, and I, just, I just loved it because he, he had it right. In order to win a championship in the case of basketball, you go from a me to a we, then you win. That's what happens. And that's what we need to do. We need to join with God. Join with God's people. Yeah. Then that's, I tell you what, to be able to win, we need to win together. And that means praying for one another and realize everybody's worth something. Yeah. You know, sometimes we put this person, oh, I don't know, Tim. They're, they're one of them dirty dog centers. I don't want to be bothered with Tim. I said, okay, if that's the case, who Jesus spent time with? What if he had that same philosophy? Right. Think about the, the woman caught in adultery. That is such a picture. You talk about sin. That is such a picture. Yeah, I mean, it was, she was guilty. I don't know where the guy was because he, he, he must have run off. They kind of you know, skirt they ask you that. But you know what? Jesus didn't Accuse, you know, uh, he didn't excuse him for his sin because at the end he says, go and sin no more. So he knew there was sin there. But he told the ones that was getting ready to stone her, he said, oh, okay, okay, if you guys want to do that, yeah. if, if that's what you want to do in the Old Testament law, under that, it could be happy. But, but Jesus is so brilliant, he said, okay, all right, who's without sin cast the first stone? All right, if you guys over here are so sinless, then throw, throw a stone at them. And they all left, oldest or youngest. But there was one person who was there without sin by the law. He could have stoned her. Why didn't he stone her? Because he realized she had value. Okay? All right? And Jesus came to save sinners. That's what he came for. Okay? While we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. He died for us. Not when we was good, while we were sinners. So therefore, that woman had value. Now, we don't really know what happened to her other than in the Bible, you see there's women that seem to follow Jesus. I don't know if she's one of them, but I'm telling you, for the rest of her life, she remembered that day. She remembered that she was probably this far from being dead and realized that there's one came and interceded in my life and made a difference. And when he said, go and sin no more, brother, I'm going to go and sin no more. You know what? And her life, what a testimony. The woman at the well, she left her bucket after Jesus talked. Hey, I found him. I found him. He told me everything I ever did. She started a revival. She didn't have evangelism explosion. She didn't have a Roman road map. She realized something happened. He's the one. He's the Messiah. And they had a revival right there. Because she got excited and realized there's something different about him. He's telling me everything. This has got to be him. And I tell you what, when you get that revelation who Jesus really is, he's a king of kings, he loves you that much, then that's a world changer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, you can keep going on this stuff. I, the, the thing about God today is seek ye first. Yes. Seek ye first, not second, not third. Seek ye first. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things be added to. That's what God. Love the Lord God with all your heart. Serve no other God. There's only one true and mighty God. King of kings, Lord of lords, wonderful Father, mighty counselor. You know, there's so many names for God. I love it today. I saw a son, Emmanuel. Man, God with us. Tell you, God in us. You know, think about all those different different names of God. That I am the healer. I'm the one that heal you. I'm the one that deliver you. Now tell me that. All that in the Bible, you think God's for us or not? 
The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Right? No, so let's not forget that. Okay, would y'all stand, please? Second. Would y'all stand? We're going to just pray for, for, and just give God the glory a few more minutes, then we'll dismiss. Oh, Father God, thank you. We want to praise you today. We want to thank you today. Oh, hallelujah. We want to take these minutes to lift you up. And realize, Lord, let our hearts always be about you. Let our hearts, our life, everything be dedicated towards you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because without you, where would we be at? Father God, it is true. In the beginning, God. That's what it's about. Amen. You're the beginning and the ending. The Alpha and Omega. Yeah. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says... That you said before Abraham was, I am. Amen. I am a present help right now. Right now. Father God, when, when, when we need you, you're right here. Let us never forget what you've done for us. Now, let us never forget what you've done in the past. Let us never forget what you're doing right now. And let us never forget what you're going to do in the future. Because you love us that much. That you was willing to die for us. Lord, and we surely can live for you every day of our life. So we want to thank you today. We want you to watch over everyone in this house. Watch over our pastor and, and, and Sally and just watch over our families. Be with every single one in this room. Be with the ones that couldn't make it today. Be with the, the ministry downstairs, children ministry. Touch every life. So that when they leave this house, that their hearts will be filled and keep filling and that cup runneth over with you. With you, Lord. With your goodness and your strength, your mercy, because they're new every day. That we're going to give you the praise today. We're going to give you the glory in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.